Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Venom Vlog, and thank you all for tuning into my recent live streams and uh, checking out my Resident Evil videos on my other channel that I recorded a couple weeks ago and finally started posting. Uh, I'm sorry I haven't been posting that much. Obviously, I've been not feeling well and also been working a lot, and I'm trying to go back and forth doing both things. And finally, I reached a breaking point. Uh, you know, when I had hypothermia, it was just minor pains and, and you know, a little bit of chest pain, some problems breathing and stuff. Um, got tested for COVID, found out I don't have COVID, so I'm clear there, thank goodness, for that at least. Um, but then I, I, it, things started getting worse. And then I guess I, I started feeling depressed about stuff. And I wasn't, you know, like a lot of times it kind of creeps up on you. You don't think about it. You don't think that you're really in a, a, a rut and I guess I was. And so it, uh, you know, kind of built to a zenith this past weekend where I started having trouble breathing and uh, started having panic attacks, like really bad anxiety attacks and, and panic attacks, like full blown, freaking out, sweating, can't breathe, uh, pulling my mask off at work to breathe, which is something I never do is take my mask off unless I'm drinking or eating at lunch. So uh, it was definitely tough. And even now, like I still have to take deep breaths in between, you know, long sentences and things like that. So I'm gonna do the best I can today. <laughs> I figured since it's pre-recorded though, I can always put in some cuts if I need to. Um, but I wanted to at least wrap this up and whether I can make any more videos between now and Christmas, we'll, we'll see how I feel, but I'm gonna try to do my best. I'll at least try to do a live stream once a week at, at the very least, and we'll see if I can do other pre-recorded stuff because with the Resident Evil movie news, there's so much of it. I'm trying to keep up with a little bit with that if I can. But on this main channel, I'll try to do my best also. Uh, I know normally I take a break around the holidays, or I try to at least. So this year it looks like I'm going to be forced to, and I just won't be posting as much, which some of you might be okay with that, because I think some of you have commented that I post too much. And I'm going to try, uh, you know, I'm going to have no choice but to, to post less for right now anyway. Um, but I did want to wrap this up, because we've been talking all season about Flash Thompson and his run as Venom, and as Agent Venom. And we have one more story left in the Cullen Bunn Complete Collection. So I do want to talk about it today. It's uh, issues 40, 41, and 42. It's the final three issues of the series. Uh, the series was canceled at this time. And it seems like uh, Cullen Bunn, because I was curious if he had other plans, if he was just going to build to a multiverse story, which he ended up doing, you know, with Venomverse and Edge of Venomverse and Venom, Venomized and things like that. And this X-Men X crossover, Planet X. So I was kind of curious if that was his ultimate end goal, but it turns out it wasn't. He actually did have a plan and he lists it in the back here. And so we'll go over that at the end of this video. Um, and since I'm in a little bit of pain, I don't know how detailed this video will be. I don't know if it'll be as detailed as you know previous episodes and stuff, but um, I'm gonna try my best. So we have uh, the art in this one, because obviously it's written by Colin Bunn. He wrote this entire graphic novel, but the art in this one is by Jorge Coelho. And, um, you know, it's, it's a different style than the other books. I definitely feel like the art, not to really slam anybody, but I felt like the art, you know, got uh, less m like my personal style, like that I like to read in a, like I love Marco Cicchetto. And I think that was probably the highlight of this book uh, for me. But uh, there have been other great artists as well, um, other than Marco. We've had uh, uh, Pepe Larraz, obviously, and I even like Kim Jacinto's art in the recent story we just talked about. Um, and I think Mike Henderson did some art in one of those issues too. Um, and then there was also uh, Koi Pham and stuff who did the Scarlet Spider issues, but we didn't cover those yet. So we'll talk about those next season when we do the Minimum Carnage uh, uh, story for Carnage Week. Um, but uh, yeah, I wasn't, you know, there wasn't a ton of artists in here. Uh, Land Medina is pretty good. I like Land Medina, but it wasn't a ton of artists in here that, that blew me away. Um, which is a shame. Uh, you know, I like Tony Silas. I mean, I, I think they all do good for their, you know, their styles, but their sty some of their styles just aren't my cup of tea. So I noticed like this, for example, is like just, for me, it's a, it's a step in a different direction. I won't say a step down because these, you know, I can't draw like these guys. <laughs> so, so it's not a cut on them. It's just what I personally like in a Venom comic, what kind of styles I like with the character. And that's obviously based on stuff, you know, that we've been reading throughout the show's history. So, uh, so you know, going through the 90s and things like that, even the 2000s, you know, like uh, some of that manga style to some of them, too. Um, I, li I like all that stuff, like that Humberto Ramos kind of style on some of them, too, as well. So, you know, I like different styles on Venom, but this these last three issues, I was like, 
I was like, okay, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of this style too much. Um, but it didn't hurt the story, so that's I want to get that clear. Sometimes when that's why I don't say art is bad if it help, if the story is still good, because part of the storytelling is the art. So I didn't dislike this story at all. I actually ra rather like this story. Um, so that's where I have to give props not just to the writing, but also to the artist too. So, uh, so yeah. So anyway, so you can you can kind of see some of the style there. It's it's not like I said, way better than I'll ever be able to do. Um, but just not the artist they had when this when Cullen Bunn first got on this book and the caliber that they were. And I felt like over time, it kind of went, went uh, again, I don't want to say go down, but it kind of went in a different direction and then started coming back towards what I like. And then it went, you know, back this way. And so I'm just kind of like, ah, man. So it ends visually on not like a stunning note for me, but some of you guys may disagree and I hope so. So if so, let me know down below. Um, but I still felt like the storytelling was good. So, you know, just because an artist doesn't have a style I like, I can still appreciate their ability to uh, pace things out. So the story starts off and it's uh, Flash Thompson having this nightmare about the end of the world, which is pretty crazy because it reminds me a lot of King in Black. Uh, you have this symbiote standing on a statue in Philadelphia and you have all these giant bat creatures flying in the background. Now granted, obviously these bat creatures are demons from hell and not, um, you know, Null's uh, spawn or whatever they are. But um, but it still reminded me the, the imagery. I was like, oh, this is a lot like King in Black, where it's like all these creatures are taking over the planet. So now that Flash has realized that, you know, he's like seeing that dream, he's starting to connect more to the symbiote. And this I really liked because I was like, how? This is the last story. And we still haven't really got too much of the actual symbiote's personality. We see it break out from time to time and, and, and lash out and tear, tear down enemies. But we don't hear it think or talk too much. And it started too recently. And in this one, Cullen finally, you know, tackles that topic, which I really like. Um, because Andy, Flash doesn't know what Andy is. He's like, I pushed my symbiote on her to protect her. And, and but not but it spawned something like something came out of my symbiote and wrapped around Andy and it took the hell mark with it why like and how so in the last issue we saw Flash was contemplating using that obelisk that device that that little clear crystal ball thing that uh was used on uh, his friend the the reporter she was a member it was the the you men or UFOs they created it and they put it in her face and it made her see her own memories. Apparently Flash took that and has it at his house. So he's like, we should look into this and see exactly what the symbiote is. And so they do. And you find out that the symbiote that's on Andy is actually the symbiote from the Daniel Way Venom run, which I thought was really cool. Um, you know, because, and, I, and I remember, I think people, we talked about that before. So I think I kind of knew that already, but just seeing it, explained out was kind of nice because I always wondered what happened to that that run ended abruptly like this run so it's it's funny that the parallels were you know the at the end of the Daniel Way run he was like what do I do with the symbiote okay I'll have Venom eat it and ingest it and then Cullen's like what do I do at the end of my Venom run okay I'll bring that thing he ate back and regurgitate it out and give it a new host I, I kind of like the parallel there I don't know if that was intentional but it was still really awesome so he's learning the explanation of of this suit and that it was uh it was a clone you know like that's what that symbiote was in the daniel way run it was a sliver i think it came from a tongue like uh, venom got his tongue knocked off like a uh, spider-man uppercutted venom and venom bit his tongue off and the tongue hit the ground so it was a nice mixture of you know some human dna but also a symbiote and that's what they used to uh, from that they cloned their own version of a symbiote so that's what's on Andy, and it took the Hellmark with it because, as Mephisto reveals, because Mephisto shows up in this, and the reason Mephisto shows up is because, obviously, we know that everyone has Hellmarks. Like, there's, like, a bunch of Hellmarks, like a dozen of them or so around the, on the planet, and Flash has already caught Damien, uh, Damien Hellstrom, and Damien Hellstrom explained this to Flash. Like, you had a Hellmark, I had a Hellmark, you know, I think Red Hulk and X-23 had Hellmarks. So they, we all have hell marks, and we're all destined to maybe uh, be the next devil. Um, so now there's someone out there, I think his name is uh, Dr. Mayhem or Major Mayhem or something like that, and he's working with Crossbones, uh, you know, the Captain America villain, and they're going around carving up and skinning the people that have the hell mark. 
And what we learned is that Damon Hellstrom, who they kind of use him in a um, kind of like a Hannibal Lecter role, which I really love because I always said if I ever wrote the Joker or Carnage, that's kind of how I would write them is they would be in a cell most of the time. And then Venom or uh, Batman would just go to them and talk to them every now and again, as like, like Clarice and Hannibal Lecter used to do. So that's how I kind of always saw them. So seeing Damon Hellstrom in that role, I was like, oh, that's cool. That's like, I would love to, to do that with a character and they're doing it really well. But you find out that one of the dead bodies that they find that got skinned was actually Damon Hellstrom. And Flash, like, how's that possible? He's locked up in a cage. So Flash visits him and sees that he's still locked up in there. And Damon says, yeah, maybe I cast a spell to divide myself. And there's maybe like a dozen of me around the planet. And it looks like someone's going around and killing all of those. And Flash goes, so you're telling me you might not even be the original Damon Hellstrom? Like, he might have been skinned recently? And he's like, I don't know, maybe. He's like, I'm just one Damon Hellstrom in here, and until I get out, I can't re-bond with the others to know if, I, if who's the original or not. So I thought that was also kind of neat, too. So, so there's a bunch of Damon Hellstroms going around, and they're all being killed by Crossbones and this Mayhem guy. So, uh, so while that's happening, you have Andy, who is uh, looking for Lord Ogre. And she's not taking no for an answer. She, like, Flash told her to wait on it um, now that they got answers about the symbiote. But she's like, no, I'm going to go after this guy. So, of course, you know, when she finds him, um, well, first we have Damien Hillstrom. So I'll show you a little bit of that art there where he's in the cell and Flash is talking to him. Um, but then we also have, uh, and then we have Crossbones showing up here, you know, targeting Andy uh, because he notices that she has the Hellmark. So he wants to go after her. But when he goes to find her, she's fighting Lord Ogre here and she's doing a pretty good job fighting him he's beating her up a little bit but finally he's like being a man and coming at her like because he kept hiding like behind his goons and stuff now he's out of goons and hired guns so when Andy attacks he has a bomb on his chest he's like if you kill me this bomb will go off and it'll release a gas and it'll kill everyone in Philadelphia and she's like yeah I think I'm gonna call your bluff on that and so she actually tries to kill him and then Venom shows up Agent Venom because he's like, hey, I told you to stop. I just talked to Damon Hellstrom, and I told you to stop. Uh, we found out about the Hellmark and what you are and everything. Like, I, I need you to, you know, stay away from Lord Ogre because I think he's just bait. I think they, you know, he's been lured out of his uh, safety net, and his goons were told to stop working for him because Crossbones and, and Mayhem are here to take that Hellmark from you. So she's like, I don't care. I'm still going to kill Lord Ogre. So while they're getting into a fight with Lord Ogre, you know, Crossbones and, and um, I think his name is Master Mayhem, and that's this guy here. And they show up with their army of uh, cultists, and they're ready to take down Venom and, uh, and, and skin Andy. So as they're doing that, and they're sending out, um, um, Master Mayhem is sending out all these demons to fight them. They fight back, and they actually do a pretty good job standing up to it. But then in the middle of the fight, they are kind of visited by Mephisto. And Mephisto says, look, you know, I... I didn't make a deal with you, Flash Thompson, because Flash is like, yeah, you know, I had the hell mark. You put it on me. So, like, take it off the kid and put it back on me and my symbiote. And Mephisto's like, I didn't make a deal with you, man. And he goes, I made a deal with your symbiote. And then, so then Flash uses the obelisk again to, like, talk to the symbiote. And the symbiote's like, he didn't make a deal with me. He made a deal with the clone symbiote. And that's why when it went to Andy, it left. It took the hell mark with it. That part of us made the deal with Mephisto, which I thought was neat because, again, it, it gives the symbiotes a personality and it shows that during this whole time there's been two personalities and the main Venom costume that was bonded to Flash, uh, it admits to Flash that it was trying to protect him. It says it actually says, you've been drugging me, you feared me, you didn't want me to get out, you didn't want me to communicate with you, and Flash, like, that's not really true. That's just how you were delivered to me and I just kept going with it he goes but obviously recently I've been stopped doing the injections you know trying to communicate with you and he's like yeah he goes well because of that because some part of you seems to care about me he goes because I gave you legs I gave you a purpose I gave you all these things um he goes but there was a dark side to me and it made a deal with Mephisto for that hell mark and now that it's gone you know I decided to stay behind and protect you. I had to purge it he's basically those dreams you were having about the end of the world this hell mark could lead to that and it's corrupting me and that's why whenever you lose control, you didn't just, you know, lose control and become Venom. You lost control and became like Mac Gargan Venom. You know, like you became insane. And that's this other symbiote, this other side of me that just went crazy. 
um, and it wanted out and I had to purge it to save you. And he's like, yeah, but you put on a little girl and the suit's like, what do you want? I'm trying to protect you. And he goes, uh, so, so Flash is like, well, we gotta, you gotta, we gotta find a way to save Andy. So they're like, okay. So they're, as they're talking to Mephisto, he's like, yeah, so I made a deal with the, the symbiote, not you. He goes, but I don't like that these guys are going around using my demons, because that's what Master Mayhem is doing. He's tapping into the powers of hell, and he's using Mephisto's army, in a sense, to hurt people on Earth for his own bidding. So Mephisto's like, look, I'll, I'll deal with this guy, this Master Mayhem and Crossbones, and I'll get rid of them. Um, and uh, and he does, for, you know, for them. And he says, but I'm not going to help this little girl. He's like, the suit and I have a deal. And the girl wants the suit, you know, but she wanted it for revenge against Lord Ogre, who does get killed. And the bomb on his chest does go off. He's killed by, I think, Crossbones or one of the bad guys. Um, and the bomb goes off on his chest, but Flash uh, takes the bomb and throws it into the portal to hell where uh, Master Mayhem, he, like, opened up, the, you know, his chest, like a portal to hell from his chest, and all these demons came out. So Flash threw the bomb into that portal in his chest. So then, like, Master Mayhem is like, oh, God, and he falls over, and I think he even makes a joke where he's like, like, uh, cause Crossbones like you fourth rate loser. Like, I don't know why I teamed up with you. And Master Mayhem goes, oh, I could have been a doctor. <laughs> I just thought that was kind of funny. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so do you have uh, the symbiote after revealing all this stuff? They, um, you know, they get into their big fight and uh, and they're talking with Mephisto after they get rid of Crossbones who teleports away with uh, Master Mayhem and all their cultists. It's just that it just ends with a talk. You know, Flash is like, well. I'm going to shoot you now. <laughs> and he shoots his machine gun into Mephisto's face. And Mephisto's like, uh, for real? Like, did you think that was going to work? And he's like, I'm just pissed off, man. He's like, help this little girl. And he's like, and Andy's like, no, I, I want the symbiote. And and so then Mephisto's like, see? And I made a deal with that symbiote for the Hellmark. So that's just the way it is, you know, kind of thing. So I, I liked all that. I thought this was really great. I thought the fight between Venom and Crossbones was really intense. Um... Crossbones is a kind of a, I don't know, second rate, maybe third rate villain in Captain America. I think he probably elevated a little bit over the years because maybe because appearing in the movies and stuff. Um, and during the Winter Soldier storyline, he kind of Ed Brubaker kind of amped him up too. So you know he became a little bit of a bigger foe for Cap. But I like that he showed up in this. Like even though it, it didn't make a ton of sense, for, for, but I'm sure that's just because Colin didn't have the time to flesh things out and really pull things together. Um, but it was still neat to see Crossbones and Venom go at it because it was a cool fight. Um, and then obviously Mephisto teleports him away. He, he actually resummons the Monsters of Evil uh, to take down. So that was kind of cool because that goes back to Colin Bunn's first issue that he wrote. The first storyline he wrote was a three-part story about the Monsters of Evil. So he brought them all and uh, and helped them team up with Flash and Andy to take down Crossbones and, and the Ma Master Mayhem. So after the whole thing's done... Again, like I said, Flash shoots Mephisto in the face, and Mephisto's just like, uh, no, dude, like, that's not gonna work. And he says, but, uh, here's the deal. He goes, you know, the hell marks are still in play. Whatever destiny thing that's destined for them is still gonna happen at some point. There, you know, eventually will be someone to take over the throne of hell. Obviously, that becomes Johnny Blaze, although I don't think Johnny Blaze had a hell mark. So I think that kind of retcons some of this a little bit, but he still does become the new king of hell, and Mephisto has been taken away. And I think as far as I know, Marvel has big plans for Mephisto in 2021. And I'm excited to see what those are because I like Mephisto a lot. Um, I actually like him as a character. I don't like the One More Day Spider-Man storyline. Um, although I will admit that Mephisto was the best written character in that whole story because uh, he does something that we all hated and that's what the devil would do, right? He would uh, he would ruin our favorite comic book character. Uh, <laughs> so... So yeah, you know, I, I like Mephisto. And so whatever plans they have for him next year, I hope it involves Ed Breeson because he was writing Ghost Rider and it was, I loved what he was doing over there. So hopefully Ed has a hand in that storyline. And um, and I'm curious to see how Mephisto is going to, you know, interact with the Marvel Universe. I'm, I'm really curious to see. But here he kind of leaves them and he says, all right, I'm, I'm going to go. Um, the, like I said, the deal was I made with the symbiote and, I, um, you know, agreements are agreements. So tough luck you know but i'm gonna let you all live and i'm gonna forgive you shooting me in the face and he goes but i need you flash thompson the devil mephisto says i need you flash thompson because andy looks up to you and even though she kind of blames you for the bad things that happened in her life she's going to a place where she needs help um she's gonna need someone by her side and i need that hellmark protected 
So I'm gonna let that you shooting me in the face pass because you're a little ant and I hate little ants and I squash little ants. And uh, he goes, but I'm not gonna squash you today because I need you to protect my investment in Andy. And of course, Flash like, well, I'm not, you know, I'll protect her, but I'm gonna try to find a way to get this Hellmark off. And he's like, yeah, okay, good luck. <laughs> So I'm, I'm kind of curious. I wonder what Mephisto's plans were. Because as we know, the penance stare from Ghost Rider, for example, doesn't work on a symbiote. So I'm kind of curious to, you know, what Mephisto's plans really were um, and, and where they would have gone with this. But at the end, you know, um, you know, he kind of narrates out, Flash Thompson narrates out. He says, you know, sometimes you have to fight um, until your knuckles are raw. This is something he opened the book with, too. He says, but sometimes it's important to let your guard down and just be there. An all-star, a hero, a soldier. All the things I dreamed of being. And still surprised, even at the end, with how my life turned out. And it just kind of ends with him and Andy in the wreckage of the battle they just fought, in the wake of Mephisto you know, disappearing on them, and realizing, okay, we won, but what does our future hold? I thought this was a, a really like a bittersweet note to end on because I, I want to know what would have happened next. Maybe one day we can get an out of continuity miniseries by Colin Bunn that kind of takes place after this and leads up to the Lee Price stuff. That would be really awesome. Um, we do have one more. Well, we have the the Thunderbolts run, which we got to talk about sometime before the end of the season. And then we have the Space Knight run, which is two graphic novels. And then also the, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy run by Bendis, which had Space Knight Venom in it. So I don't know how much of that I'll be able to get to before the end of the season, but I'll try my best, obviously. Um, but there is one more story in issue 150 of Venom that actually shows you how Flash Thompson loses the symbiote and how it ends up on Lee Price. Um, so I would I would love one day for Colin Bunn to write a story between uh, this and that story. That would be really nice. And so at the end, Symbiote uh, Symbi wrote, there's a little four, uh, letter that was at the end of issue 42 originally, and thankfully they reprinted it here with some of the, you know, the artwork for the comic, which was which is really cool. And it taught, it's from Cullen Bunn, and he says, you know, um, as I sit down to write this, my sad war, uh, my sad farewell to Venom. I think back on the day I got the call asking me to take over this series, and uh, he basically says, you know, how nervous he was, but also how excited he was, and that he loves Venom so much, um, and that he loves Eddie so much. And I was really, uh, really awesome to hear that, but that he also was wanted to take a chance on Flash and 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 he liked Flash as a character too so I was like this is great this is someone who a lot of writers they do that like you know like the new guy who's coming on um Green Lantern I think he said like he hates Hal Jordan and and I remember that guy he because he used to shop at Golden Apple when I worked there his name's Jeff Thorne he's like he's always been a really nice guy to me um but he's I, I think online he always talks about how he doesn't like uh, Hal Jordan and a few times in the store when I worked at Golden Apple he would you know we talk Green Lantern he'd bring that up I'm a John Stewart fan. That's my favorite Green Lantern. That's also Jeff Thorne's favorite Green Lantern. But he he hates Hal, and I don't. Uh, I Just because I have a favorite doesn't mean I would cut another character down to elevate my character. That's just never how I've been as a writer. But a lot of writers do do that, and I hate that. So seeing here that Cullen has an appreciation for Eddie while he's writing Flash is good, because I don't think Rick Remender had that same appreciation for Eddie. I think... Uh, Remender just saw Eddie as like a bad guy and as a crazy person. And while his compass is maybe broken, his moral compass, I don't think Eddie is crazy. Um, so reading this was neat. And he says, you know, in the end, though, readers may never know what I had in mind for The Descent, which is the big storyline with the Hellmarks. He says the, they'll never know what I had planned for Toxin and Mania. So it looks like he was going to bring Eddie back at some point and also have Mania attached uh, to, uh, to that story. Um, for the emergence of an all-new anti-venom, which was an idea that Declan Shalvey had, and him had geeked out about. So a new anti-venom was even uh, thought about between them. And that would have been really awesome to see what their version of anti-venom would have been. And Declan Shalvey, whose art is in this book too, I think on just one or two issues, is fantastic. I love Declan Shalvey's uh, style. Um, and then also for the War of the Symbiote, uh, for Venom's rise to the preeminent hero in Philly, or for the inevitable return of Crime Master. Suffice to say, it would have been a wild ride. I would have, I would really love a series, even if it's called What If Venom? That would be awesome. What If Venom? What If Agent Venom? 
And you could do like a six issue miniseries where Colin Bunn touches on some of this, you know, and if it sells well, do a follow up. Kind of how they're doing with Symbiote Spider Man right now. And Peter David is telling out of continuity, out of, out of main con or, uh, current continuity stories. It, he's like t filling in the gaps of stories where Peter Parker was had the, the symbiote. I love that series. Uh, there's been two full series so far and uh, two issues, or one or two issues of a new series, uh, which I've only read the first issue of. Um, it's fantastic. So I would love to see Colin Bunn do something like that where he actually gets to go back and tell another Flash Thompson story. Um, maybe he can't do War of the Symbiotes because I think that was something that um, that Rick Remender was going to do and set up and then ultimately didn't. I don't really want to see another War of the Symbiote stuff things. I don't want I don't want to see that anymore, especially after King and Black. I'm going to be I kind of want like more street level stories, but I wouldn't mind seeing a story about Venom and Mania and Toxin and the Descent and uh, maybe Crime Master coming back being resurrected from hell or something uh, for one last battle. That could all be really cool. So um, I don't know. You guys let me know if, if you want, if you liked these last three issues. I did. I, I actually thought, like I said, it's bittersweet because I thought, man, these are really good issues. And I would love to see what these issues are setting up. But then we'll probably never get them. So if Colin Bunn is watching this, you know, like I doubt. But if he is, like, I, I love this run. It's It was fun. Um, it started off a little mad to me, but then it picked up really good. And I, I... I have criticisms of it. Obviously, I you know you can go back and watch all the episodes. Uh, I did some. I have some criticisms, but ultimately this was a really fun run, and I would say this was. I enjoyed this a little more than the Remender stuff. The Remender stuff did <clears throat> Flash Thompson and Betty and the Crime Master and Jack O' Lantern. Uh, well, kind of the Crime Master, but Jack O' Lantern, Betty, and Flash were perfect in his run. But most other things I didn't really like, uh, especially the Eddie Brock stuff. But Cullen's uh, had very few things that I disliked in it on on that level. And I thought Cullen actually tried to redeem Eddie in some way, too, from the kind of character that Remender wrote him as. So this, you know, this is cool. If you're out there and you don't own this collection, like, I would say pick it up. Um, it's 40 bucks, which is not bad because you get um, almost, yeah, you get over 40, uh, over 20 comics in it. So that's like a little less than $2 a comic because you get issues 23 through for, through 42. Uh, so that's, I think, 20 comics right there. Then you get issue 27.1. Um, and then you also get Minimum Carnage, Alpha, and Omega and Scarlet Spider issues 10 and 11. You get the whole crossover for that too. Um, and then also don't forget that, um, oh, no, that was Circle of Four. That was in a previous book. So yeah, So yeah, you get like 25, 26 comic books in here for $40. It's a steal. And if you can find it at a good price, even if you just find it at cover price at your local comic store, it's worth every penny. Um, but I want to hear what you think. You know, what did you think of Flash Thompson this season? Obviously, we got a few more stories left to tell regarding him as Agent Venom before we get into the Space Knight stuff. Uh, and they're all going to be in volumes one through five of Thunderbolts. And I'll try to touch on that very, very soon for you guys and definitely before the end of the season. But for now, what do you think of this? What do you think of the ending? And what do you think of his plans, Colin Bunn's plans, to where he wanted to go after this. I'd love to hear all your thoughts down below as always, and we'll continue our conversation down there. Uh, I am getting tired and I talked way longer than I thought I was gonna, so thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you sticking through with this episode and being a long episode and all, and I'll try to get back to shorter episodes very, very soon. Thanks so much, see you in the future, peace.